Linda Bart for the Bruce Company is here, taking your calls at 270-9933. We're seeing pink today. Yes, we are. We're getting ready for Valentine's Day. So we've got azaleas and lovely hyacinth that are, the scent is filling the, the um, mm -hmm. entire room here. Yeah, so beautiful. And calla lilies and even some hydrangeas. So all of these um, plants are available for you to give to your sweetheart or friend or whatever. Right, we have some bookkeeping to do. You are semi-retiring. Yes, I am. And so you're going to be traveling a lot. Hopefully. And when you're not here. Then I'm going to have, Lisa's going to stand <laughs> in. Lisa. Lisa, Lisa Briggs has been working at the Bruce Company for many, many years, so I'm sure people recognize her. And you would you'd be on our morning show, weren't you? I did. I did sort of craft and gardening things right. on the morning show. So years you're not ago. here next week, so. Next week I will not be here, but so we're gonna, Lisa will. We're going to have a team of experts taking your calls today. So let's <laughs> get, get to the phones. We'll start with Ralph in Ridgeway. Hi, Ralph. Hi. Hi, what's your question? Uh, have, uh, my garden, my vegetable garden is surrounded by walnut trees, and I don't have a very good outcome. Is there a reason because of that? And is this a vegetable garden that you're talking about, Ralph? Yes. Okay, because Alisa was saying plant, there's plants that will tolerate um, black walnuts a little bit better, but vegetable gardens are a little bit touchier, especially if you like tomatoes. Is there any possibility that you could yeah. either move it to an... Move it to another location further from, from the tree, but keep in mind that the tree's roots are going to extend two to three times the length, and those roots give off a toxin that some plants are very, very sensitive to. The other possibility, if you can't move the garden, if that's, um, you want full sun, so further away from the tree is going to be a good idea, but I've heard of people having luck where they put down fabric and then put soil into a raised garden. I was going to say that too. Raised beds yes. work pretty well. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. But you don't want a garden in the shade. It's no, you don't. away from trees, any trees. But that tree, those trees roots extend far beyond where the, the shade of the tree would extend. Okay. All right, let's go to John in Madison. Hi, John. Hello, I've got a three-year-old blueberry plant that I have outdoors in a container during the summer months. I've got it indoors when it gets cold. It's healthy, it's green, it blossoms, it has leaves. But no blueberries for three years. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Lisa, you want to take this one? Well, blueberry plants were, are going to need some kind of dormancy period, so I would suspect that you bringing it inside for the winter is sort of compromising its ability to set flower buds. So you might want to put it outside in a sheltered place for the winter or in your garage um, and let it get some cold. Mm -hmm. blue, blue, blueberries are perennials? Yes. Yes, absolutely. So you just leave it it's a shrub. Out. Yeah, okay. you could plant it, but it sounds like there are some new ones out now that do really well as container plants, but you should leave it outside. Okay. Let's go to Doc in Madison. Hi, Doc. Hi. Hi. What's your question? Hi. Uh, I have a question for you. I have this plant that I've had for like five years. Every two years, it will... Uh, put out a shoot and a flower that lasts for like two months or better but if you go smell it it's really sharp i've got my nose pricked a couple of times <laughs> i was just wondering uh what kind of plant that is because i don't even remember well that's gonna okay. be difficult and the part that that pokes you is the flower or the plant itself no the flower it comes out about every two years it puts a stock up and then it flowers and the flowering lasts for like two months or better Okay, but I, it's really sharp. I'm going to guess that it might be a yucca. I'm just Maybe. trying to think of <laughs> Yeah, we, you know, either shoot me a picture, you know, yeah. you can take a picture on your, on your phone and send it over to lbarch at brucecompany.com and perhaps I can identify it that way. Yeah, I think we need to see a it. A picture. Kind of yeah, tough definitely. to do over the phone. Worth a thousand words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, LaVon in Bagley. Hi, what's your question? Hi, I received uh, an orchid plant for Christmas, like the ones you have sitting there. Mm -hmm. And just yesterday, the flowers began to droop and look like they're going to die. What happens next? How do I care for it? Well, Linda can show you, because she's right there. When all the flowers fall off, when they're all bloomed out, you want to cut it back to just above one of those little nodes. Can you see them, Linda? You know where the little... Right here. Yes. yes. And if you keep watering it and maybe give it some bloom booster and make sure it gets enough sun, a lot of times a new spike, a new little branch will come out where that note is. You can see where, that, where there's one coming oh. on the one we brought. Mm -hmm. So if it doesn't do that within, I would say, six weeks, you don't see much growth there, then just cut the flower spike all the way back to the base of the plant 
and keep it watered, give it a little rest, and if it's mm -hmm. happy, it'll rebloom. Yeah, it'll send up new spikes from the, the base. Flowers last for months. Yes, for they months. Do. Yes. All right, we are out of time. If you're on the line, stay there. Linda and Lisa, <laughs> we'll talk to you off the Yay. air. We'll see you next week. Yeah. Have fun on your vacation. Thank you. We'll be right back with the final check of your weather.